So somebody came onto my last video and they said that basically I was kicking a man while he was down. Obviously in regards to what I was saying about Canelo. I just wanted to address that quickly here with this video before I, I get into the main topic or what I wanted to talk about. So kicking a man while he was down. I don't think that's what I was doing. So basically what I was doing in that video was I was reviewing my thoughts on the Canelo Alvarez Dimitri Bivol fight and I basically said what I saw. Um, the fight essentially confirmed to me a lot of the beliefs and suspicions that I had had in regards to Canelo going back years and I basically made my feelings known in the video and anything that I said in the video was entirely consistent with things that I've said about Canelo in the past. So in regards to me kicking a man while he was down. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Maybe you're com completely unfamiliar with my channel, but if you followed me with, you know, for any significant amount of time, that you will know that the things that I was saying in that video, I've been saying about Canelo for years. All right, I've always believed that Canelo Alvarez is a fraud. I've always believed that he lacks boxing skill, that he has no heart. I've always believed that he is a protected, a protected diva and um, yeah I, I've always believed that the second he went in the ring with a guy who had physical advantages over him who actually came to win he was going to lose and lose badly so yeah I, I don't quite understand the the idea that I'm kicking him while he was down I mean if I, if I were to go into that video and say oh you know I respect Canelo after he loses of course I'm gonna say I respect Canelo he's such a warrior you know he gave it a good go and he'll come back stronger and yeah he was he, he was giving us the fights we want you know that that, that would have been that would have been very very pretentious and very two-faced of me to say those things wasn't it so you're not gonna get any pretense from me you're not gonna get any two-faced behavior from me okay I, I, I tell it like it is I'm very honest about my views and opinions on these fighters and like I even addressed in the video, I'm very consistent. I, m my opinion on fighters doesn't generally change in just one fight, okay? It takes a lot more for me to really change my views and opinions on any particular fighter. So I just wanted to address that quickly, you know. You're not, you're not going to get any, any two-faced pretense from me. Speaking of being two-faced, I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of things I heard from Eddie Hearn. So, I was listening to an interview with Eddie Hearn, reading some comments and whatnot. And yeah, Eddie Hearn's obviously gutted about the result. He was, even though he's affiliated with both guys, he essentially co-promotes both guys. He was definitely rooting for Canelo and he as good as admitted that. And basically... <laughs> <laughs> he said that he thinks the fight was very close, that it was very competitive, that Bevo just nicked it, and that, of course, the scorecards were perfectly justified. You know, it, and, and not only that, he was talking about Canelo being this great guy and this warrior who gives us the fights we want, and the boxing fans need to appreciate him and stop hating, and this, that, and the other. And it, It's funny to me listening to Eddie Hearn say this, because... People have very short memories. You see, I remember just a few years ago, Eddie Hearn was <laughs> calling Canelo a disgrace and saying that he should be banned from boxing for life. That that was, of course, before he got the opportunity to sign Canelo. Then all of a sudden he changed his tune and Canelo became the greatest thing since sliced bread and such a great guy. And Eddie Hearn's been up his arse ever since. So yeah, I found that pretty funny. But another thing that I thought was quite interesting was the fact that I heard about the fact that going into the fight, apparently Dimitri Bivol only got paid $2 million for the fight. Now, $2 million obviously to you and I sounds like a lot of money because, again, most of us will never see that kind of money in our lives. But to a guy like Dimitri Bivol and a guy like Canelo, you know, when, when, you, can, when you compare it to the average Canelo payday, it's only a fraction of what some of these guys tend to get. I mean, Caleb Plant, who was Canelo's last opponent, he got something like 10 million, something crazy like that. Um, Sergey Kovalev got, I think, 8 million, maybe more. So, and those are just the ones we know about. I'm, I'm sure there are others who have been paid significantly more than what Beaver was. So, <laughs> it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Like, it's very, very interesting how it's the guy who essentially got shortchanged who's the guy who came to win 
you know, it's interesting how the guy who got paid considerably less was the guy who won. <laughs> yeah, it makes you think that it's almost, you know, I've got, I've got a sneaking suspicion. It's almost as if they're paying these guys to lose, isn't it? You know, think just, just, just think about it. You know, put your Inspector Gadget detective cap on and think about that one. So, <laughs> I found that interesting. What I also found interesting were some of the comments made by Dimitri Bivol. He's saying that he's going to go through with the rematch and he wants to be paid accordingly for the rematch. <laughs> and not only that, but I'm hearing that I'm hearing that they're talking about having the rematch at 168. So, I, I mean, how funny is it that, that, that Eddie Hearn's supposed to promote both of these guys Yet he shows such blatant favoritism to the point where he makes the fight. The fight happens at 175. Bevel absolutely dominates and schools Canelo, winning practically every round. Winning the fight by a wide margin, leaving very, very little doubt and very, very little demand for a rematch. <laughs> but they're talking about having a rematch and not only having a rematch, but having it at a lower weight. So, so let me get this straight. The two guys fight at light heavyweight. Then they move for, for a light heavyweight title. Then they move down in weight to fight for a super middleweight title. Like, has has that ever happened before in boxing? It just it sounds so bizarre to me. It's like they will do literally anything. They are desperate to get Canelo back on <laughs> back to winning ways. You know, <laughs> I mean the, the whole the whole Canelo Alvarez scam. Like to all the people who fell for the for the Canelo scam. You know, you guys must. You must feel like absolute arses right now. You really must. The fact that you guys got behind this guy and you, you were so on board with the hype to the point where you just couldn't see what was right in front of you. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's that's pretty much what I've been thinking ever since the fight. It's just, just how funny this whole situation is and how <laughs> how it exposed so many people and, uh, and, and, and so much dishonesty in the sport. So... A few more people came into my video too, and again, a lot of people seem to have been very butthurt and very offended by the things I was saying. Some Somebody said to me, they said, no, Canelo has been giving us all the fights. Bevo was too big for him. I'm like, okay, so Bevo was too big, but but Canelo was good enough to be a longer Macabu and potentially good enough to be Usyk. But Bevel was too big for him, you know, he, he was he was good enough to beat Sergei Kovalev and he was good enough to beat Caleb Plant and all those guys, but Bevel was just too big, you know, he was just too big, he was too tall, he was too heavy, you know, that's why, that's why he won, right, that's the only reason, it had nothing to do with the fact he actually threw punches at Canelo's head, it, <laughs> it had nothing to do with, with the fact that he didn't, he, that, that he wasn't scared of the counter punches, despite the fact there was no counter punches. Where do both guys go from here? That, that's another thing I've been thinking about here and there. So, I guess Canelo only really has two options that anybody is going to be somewhat interested in. Obviously, the first one is the rematch, which again, like I've already said, they're talking about having it at super middleweight because, you know, I, I guess the training wheels aren't fully off with Canelo. You know, they gave him one fight without a dehydration clause. And without paying the opponent an extortionate amount of money to take a dive. So, uh, yeah, the opponent actually came to win and completely dominated and exposed and schooled him. Had him looking like an absolute idiot. So, yeah, they have to put the training wheels back on and they have to compromise Bevel. And they have to do something to just uh, get Canelo's lick back, you know. So, <laughs> that that's obviously one thing that they can do is they can go through with the rematch. But the other thing is, of course the third fight with Gennady Golovkin, and I'm actually intrigued by, by both fights, to be honest, I mean, I, I don't, I could care less, to be honest, which one he fights, either way, um, Canelo's been exposed, so it, it, it doesn't really matter who he fights, but it's really a lose-lose situation for him, isn't it, because let, let's say he fights, let's say he fights Bevel again, and the fight's at 168, uh, they pay Bevel, like, 10 15 million to um throw punches to the side of canelo's head and pretend to hit him and to pull his punches just a little bit more than he did the first fight because let's be honest he really let canelo off the hook in the first fight could have stopped him but 
like I said in my review, he basically, you know, was was taking a little bit off his shots and, you know, he was he was being a little bit too nice to Canelo in there because I mean if he if he'd have gone in there and put Canelo flipping in a wheelchair, you know, he would have he would have never gotten the rematch, would he? So obviously he need to he needed to let Canelo get through the fight unscathed. Or relatively unscathed anyway. But yeah, it, if that fight happens and if they compromise Bevel, you know, they have have the fight at 168, uh, have Bevel a little bit drained and, um, you know, pay him enough to be afraid and intimidated by the counter punches, that's not really going to mean anything, is it? You know, people are just going to say, oh, well, you know, Bevel was compromised. Obviously, the fanboys will be happy, but, you know, they'll, they'll know deep down that it doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's relatively inconsequential. So Canelo definitely won't get a whole lot of credit for it by from from hardcore boxing fans like myself who know what we're looking at. So that's really a like I said, that's a, that's a lose lose situation for Canelo. You know, if if it, the likelihood is he probably would lose again, but even if he was able to get the win, it wouldn't mean a whole lot because, like I said, it would just be the only way he can win the fight is if the fight's fixed. So. Again, he wouldn't get a whole lot of credit there. And in regards to the third Triple G fight, which is, of course, Canelo's um, opportunity to finally avenge his two defeats to Triple G, um, that wouldn't really mean a whole lot, would it? Because let's say he was able to beat Triple G this time, um, because, of course, he got dominated in the first two fights. If he was able to beat Triple G this time, yeah, it would it would allow Canelo to sleep at night, but what it wouldn't do was it really wouldn't regain his honour. It really wouldn't be that much of a deal or much of a big deal from boxing fans because Triple G's in his 40s now. Okay, he's 40 years old and it's been several years since Triple G has looked like prime Triple G, you know. So even if Canelo was able to beat Triple G this time, it would be a situation where people would just say, well, you know what, he got him at the right time. You know, and not only that, but the fight, again, would be at 168. And Can Triple G is, of course, a career middleweight. Triple G is, of course, a guy who, for a long, long time now, has started, has looked a little bit shop-worn. Um, again, tri tri Canelo would have gotten more credit, in my opinion, had he legitimately beaten Triple G a few years ago. Like, if he'd have given him... If he'd have had the third fight after the second fight, it would have made a lot more sense, because, obviously... The rivalry was still relevant then, but if they have the third fight now, it's relatively inconsequential. And I actually reckon it'll still be a very tough fight, even if Canelo is able to win it. It's still a fight that's going to take a lot out of him. And the reason why I say that it's a lose-lose situation is because, like I said, if he beats a 40-year-old Triple G, that's not going to really mean a whole lot, is it? And people are just going to keep it real. You're going to say, you know what, Triple G was old, so... It doesn't really mean a whole lot. But if he loses to Triple G, if Triple G is able to beat him again, that's going to be an absolute embarrassment. Like, <laughs> if you thought losing to Beevil was embarrassing, I mean, losing to a 40-year-old Triple G, after all that's been said over the years, th that's going to be hilarious. It's going to be insane. It's going to be really, really mortifying for Canelo and his fans because... You know, the, the reason why, and I, and I alluded to this in my last video, the reason why Canelo and his fans really were so confident that he was going to keep winning was because maybe even on a subconscious level, they knew that the fights were rigged and they knew that the boxing establishment had Canelo's back. You know, they knew he had the training wheels on. But what's funny about it is, and why, why we can have a lot of fun with these people now is because they're never going to have that same level of confidence in regards to him. There's always going to be that air of uncertainty now about Canelo. Every fight he goes in, they're going to they're going to think to themselves, "Is this opponent actually going to come to win?" Because if he <laughs> if that happens, he ain't got no chance, has he? So <laughs> yeah, this the Canelo situation's comical, man. I just I figured I'd have a quick ramble about it. I, I find it really funny. Again, I'm, I'm, I triggered a lot of people with my last video. A lot of people were really butthurt. And um doesn't really matter to me, okay? It is what it is. I, I've, I've always kept it consistent. Um, I've been proven right in regards to Canelo. 
and all the boxing geniuses that called him, you know, the greatest technical fighter in the sport, had him pound for pound number one, they all look like a bunch of idiots now, don't they? So, <laughs> that's pretty much all i got to say anyway, guys. Um, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? Like, do I, do I believe, if he fights Beevil again, do I believe that, that it will be a fixed fight? It, it just depends. Y you'll have to ask me if and when the fight gets made, and... In regards to the Triple G fight, look, I honestly don't know whether or not Triple G at 40 years old would have enough left to put enough of a beating on Canelo to either get the decision or get him out of there. I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to see the fight first. I'd have to see how both guys look in training. And and that's why I'm intrigued by it. See, I'm actually kind of excited about Canelo's career now. Because I know now, at this point in time, that it's possible to get a legit win over him. So, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. I might make another video later in the week once I've had time to think. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. God bless.